Let's look at exercise 15.12, Detecting Gypsy Moths. A gypsy moth is a serious threat to oak and aspen trees. A state agricultural department places traps throughout the state to detect the moths. When traps are checked periodically, the mean number of moths trapped is only 0.5, but some traps have several moths. The distribution of moth counts is finite and strongly skewed with a standard deviation of 0.7. Use the central limit theorem to find the probability that the average number of moths in 50 traps is greater than 0.6. So to answer this problem, first thing we're going to look at is the population distribution. So the population, first of all, let's think about what it is that we are measuring from this population. So x, kind of the individual that we're measuring here, is the number of moths in a trap. So number of moths in a trap. So x would be the individuals. The mean of the population up here tells us is 0.5. So this is mu. And standard deviation of the population tells us is 0.7. So that's going to be our sigma. So the mean of the population, mu, is equal to 0.5, and sigma, standard deviation of the population, is 0.7. Now the shape of the population, it says that it is finite and strongly skewed. So our shape, I'm just going to put strongly skewed. So here we have a strongly skewed population. I would not be able to answer probability questions about individuals in this population because we don't know how to find areas under strongly skewed distributions. So I can't look at, at probabilities about individuals. But what we want to find out, what the question is asking, is what is the probability, not of an individual, but that x bar, the mean number of moths in 50 traps, is greater than 0.6. So in order to answer probability questions about sample means, we use the sampling distribution. So let's talk now about the sampling distribution. So we know that the mean of the sampling distribution is always equal to the mean of the population. So the mean of our sampling distribution in this case would be equal to 0.5, the same as mu, the mean of the population. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution is always equal to sigma divided by square root of n. So in this case, that's going to be 0.7 over square root of 50. As it said that we were going to look at 50 traps, so that's looking at our sample size there. If I take 0.7 divided by square root of 50, I get 0.0989 or approximately 0.1. What about the shape of our sampling distribution? Well, the central limit theorem tells us that if our sample size is large, then the shape of our sampling distribution will be approximately normal, regardless of what the shape of the original population is. So in this case, we have a sample size of 50. 50 is large enough, kind of a good rule of thumb is 40-ish. Uh, so basically, if you have a sample size of 40 or more, then your sample size is large. So we have 50 in our case, so we know that the shape of our sampling distribution is going to be approximately normally distributed. So our probability question is about x bar. We found out that x bar has an approximate normal distribution. Do we know how to find areas under normal distributions? You bet we do. So let's look at finding that probability now. So I'm going to give us a little bit bigger page to work on. So first thing I want to do is I'm just going to do a little sketch of the sampling distribution. So we know that the sampling distribution is normally distributed. It has a mean equal to 0.5, and it had a standard deviation of 0.1. So using my information about normal distributions, I can go ahead and sketch out a little picture of what this looks like. Remember, the standard deviation of our sampling distribution was approximately 0.1, so that's what I'm using here to kind of sketch out my little picture. 
Okay, and I'm looking for the probability that I get a sample mean that is greater than 0.6. So 0.6 here, it's right here on my graph, and I'm looking for greater than 0.6. So that's all this area to the right of 0.6. So this area right here is going to be the answer to this probability question. Well, how do I find areas under normal distribution curves? Well, I standardize and use table A to help me out. So I'm going to start by standardizing. So I standardize by taking my value, in this case it's a sample mean value, minus the mean, um, which is mu, divided by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is sigma divided by square root of n. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in those values. So I'm going to have 0.6, that's the mean that I'm interested in finding out a probability about, minus the value of mu, which was 0.5, and divided by sigma, which is 0.7 over square root of 50. When I do that calculation, I end up with 1.01. .01. So this is my standardized value. I would go ahead and take this to table A. So here's my table A. I'm going to look up 1.01 .01 on my table here. So that's going to be, here's the 1.0 part. Here's the 01 part. So where those intersect, I'm going to get this value right here from table A is 0.8438. So back at my problem, table A said 0.8438. But wait, table A, remember, always gives us the area to the left of our z-score. It's a percentile, so it's always giving us the area to the left. So looking at my picture over here, this 0.8438 is basically this big white space over here. But that's not what I wanted to know. I wanted to know the greater than 0.6, not the less than. Well, in order to get the greater than area, I just have to take that value from the table and subtract from 1. So 1 minus 0.8438 is going to give us 0.1562. And that's our answer. So the probability uh, that the average number of moths in 50 traps is greater than 0.6 is going to be 0.1562 or 15.62%.